Hello everybody, it's Julia here from the Highly Sensitive Tarot and I'm back today with another instalment from the series looking at the Major Arcana started by the lovely Marsha at Musings by Marsha and today we're up to the Hermit so this is card number nine and I think this is the tenth, yeah, this is the tenth video, isn't it? Um, and as I said, this is the Hermit. I've only watched um, Marsha's video so far, I haven't got round to watching other people's but I hope to do that today um, so I don't know whether I've chosen any of the same cards as anybody else it'll be interesting to see I think the hermit is a big favorite amongst lots of tarot readers and lots of the the people in the sort of magical community I suppose I, th I think it probably is an energy that resonates with many of us um, it particularly resonates for me I'm a Virgo and the Hermit is associated with the Virgo um, astrology and Mercury. And um, I'm a Virgo sun and moon and I have a great deal of Virgo in my chart. And um, while I totally get the, um, you know, I'm an introvert and I totally get the solitude part of the Hermit. You know, that need for peace and solitude time to think and take stock and ruminate, um, you know, just organise your thought processes. Um, I, I also see the hermit as being um, somebody quite restless in their own way as well. Um, you know, you don't, you don't often see the hermit sort of locked away in a reclusive little cell of any kind although you do see that and I have got at least one card of that but generally I think the hermit is on the move aren't they they're restless you know there's this sort of restless um, gathering of information always analyzing making connections um, and that is something that I resonate with greatly as a Virgo because my mind is very very analytical and um and is very restless <laughs> which is not always a great thing it really isn't it can be quite hard work at times um now this this card here is from the robin hood tarot which is an old old deck that i bought second hand off ebay a while ago and i haven't um had this deck out a great deal but i love the hermit in this deck i just I don't know what it is. I just think everything about this visually really appeals to me. It really pleases me. I like how the light is coming out of the lantern. I love the colour of the sky. I love how he stood on top of a mountain. I know this is very Rider Waite Smith, but it's it's just very slightly different, isn't it? And the colouring is different. And yeah, I just really, really like it. So this is my first card and like I said this to me is really that sort of restless wandering searching um, shining that light and I think I think Virgos can be quite skeptical <laughs> in our nature and so if anyone is going to shine a lantern in a dark place and have a good look it's a Virgo isn't it you know to to try and find that clarity to try and find that understanding um sometimes you have to shine a light in some very dark places and i don't think that virgos are afraid of that you know virgos are not afraid of times of retreat um so yeah i think that the hermit and the virgo archetype go really really well together um as a person in a card reading, a hermit could represent a sort of wise, inspirational person, a friend, a therapist, a teacher. They can help to shine lights on things that were previously confusing or mysterious and help you find what you're seeking. Um, I think in its higher realms, this card sort of repre represents, like I said, that solitude, that need for contemplation, meditation, and maybe like the attention to inner details. 
Um, but at its lower levels, this can also represent an immaturity in thinking, I think, and that kind of extreme introversion, you know, that can sometimes come from being overly self-conscious or withdrawing from life or denying certain aspects of life. And, um, you know, extreme introversion is not a healthy thing, is it? So, um, you know, we are sociable creatures by nature <clears throat> and even you know even the the worst of the virgos and the hermits amongst us we all need to be amongst people um and have those connections sometimes so um so yeah so that's my first card there i shall leave that on the table and that's from the lovely robin hood tarot which is um it's a Llewellyn deck, isn't it? I don't even know who it's by, to be honest. Doesn't even seem to say on this little box. So that's my first card. What else have we got here? Um, so my second card is coming from the Wild Unknown. And I only have this in the little pocket tin edition. But that's you know enough for me and I love this look at this look isn't that beautiful the little tortoise there he's got his he carries his home on his back so his his safe space is is with him all the time and I love the little lantern he's shining his light on top of him let's have a look in the book because Kim Krantz always has the most fantastic guidebooks I think Let's see what she says. So she says, The idea of being a hermit is not supported in our society, but in the realm of tarot hermits, they are highly celebrated and valued creatures. Through meditation, solitude and stillness, they bring wisdom to all. When this card appears, it's time to step back from the business of day-to-day -day life and focus on your inner realm. Become more self-aware if you're intrigued by meditation, start now. Spend time by yourself. Your inner fire is ready to be lit and it will shine for all to see. So that's so cute, isn't it? I love that. This is another little deck, really, that I don't, um, I don't get out nearly enough. Well, it's a really intuitive little deck, isn't it? So there's that one. Um, the next, I will just say, actually, I've got five cards to show you, but I've also got a six card and it's from my um, inner child tarot deck, the one with all the fairy tales in it. And I thought if you're interested in that kind of thing, I'm going to read that at the end. Um, yeah, so... Anyway, the next card, the third card, is from the Horror Tarot, which is a deck that I've just received recently. And I really, really like this um, Hermit card from this deck. I love that it's just unusual to see it in yellow, isn't it? Normally we associate blue with the Hermit very much. I'll read you what it says at the bottom of this card because you'll never see it in the camera. So it says the hermit stands alone on the top of a mountain, <clears throat> which symbolises his spiritual mastery, growth and accomplishment. He has chosen this path of self-discovery and as a result has reached a heightened state of awareness of himself and the world that he lives in. I just, I love that. And it's so true. There need does need to be um, a separation um, in order to, to reach that kind of growth I think within yourself you know you need for all the trappings and the distractions of the world to have disappeared for a time I think um the next card is in a similar sort of vein as the horror tarot and this is the zombie tarot and this is my favorite ever zombie card from the moment I bought this deck and I saw this card 
it just has made me laugh because it's me. It really is me. I hope you can see that in the light there. So this is a woman who's laid on a sofa. She's got a box of chocolates. She's got nice soft lighting. She's in a dressing gown. She's reading a nice book. She's relaxed and happy and content in her own world. Um, and outside, as you can see, she's boarded up the windows there. And outside, you can see all the zombies trying to get in at her. But she's not paying them any attention. She's just lost in her own little world of contemplation, um, you know, doing what what hermits do best, really, just enjoying the solitude and contemplation and um, having a, a retreat, I guess, from the chaos and the drama of the outside world. She hasn't even started on her chocolates yet. Look, you can see they're all there. <laughs> But that is definitely me. I love that card. I think if there was one card out of all of my decks that I could pull out just to say this is me, it would be this card. <laughs> and the fifth card here I've got is, um, this is another deck I bought fairly recently. I don't think I've probably shown it on my channel um, as yet, but it's the Touchstone Tarot by Cat Black. And I chose this card, really, because, um, again, I hope you can see that. My lighting today is just shocking. I am sorry. Outside, it has not stopped raining and the sky has just been cloudy and dark for the last couple of weeks, really. You wouldn't think it's nearly June here. It's about 13 degrees outside and windy and rainy and I can't seem to get any any good light in here so I can see there's a glare from my camera thing on there so anyway this is the touchstone tarot this is the hermit and I'm going to read you um from the book about this I think this is Saint Francis of Assini that that's what's in my memory let's have a look So, yeah, so this is a monk and he's surrounded by animals. He's got his lantern, but there's a cat there, there's a stag and there's an owl. And it says a brown robed monk stands in a dark forest at night. He carries a lantern, but his eyes are closed. A stag, a cat and an owl stand close by. The central figure in the card is St. Francis in Ecstasy by Caravaggio. Although St Francis is not specifically associated with this card in traditional tarot, I feel his relationship with both the divine and also the natural world make him a good representation, um, an archetype of the hermit. And I would really agree with that, actually, because that's not something that I think about too often or that you hear too often, you know, when we look at the other cards here. It's not always immediately apparent just how in touch with and connected I think the hermit is to the natural world. I think because the hermit might keep themselves away from people and society in that way and the trappings, the material trappings of society, I think they're much more in touch with the natural world you know, we often see the hermit stood on top of a mountain. Well, they've had to walk a long path to get up the top of that mountain and they will have been around and be comfortable with the natural world, I think. So it says here, look within. This is a time for reflection, quietness and solitude. Stand apart from your everyday life to assess your goals and you will seek the answers there. And I think often if we do need times of solitude and introspection, I think to get out in nature and get around the natural world really does help with that, doesn't it? So so for me, um, I really enjoy that representation, actually, of the hermit. So let's leave those there and... Um, 
I'm going to read from, um, let's just get the, I've got so much stuff on my table. <laughs> so this is the inner child cards and I think I have had these out once already for um, another card which I can't remember at the moment. I don't know which one it was. But anyway, this is um, the Hermit in the deck. This one is Snow White. So let's just leave that there for a moment. And I'm going to read you um, the story in here of Snow White. It's about two and a half pages. So if you'd like to listen to that, that would be lovely. Please do say hello in the comments if you're leaving at this point. But I hope you enjoyed my selection and... Um, I shall look forward to watching everybody else's. So it says, Hidden within the fairy tale of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs is a major lesson concerning service to humanity and the utilisation of wise discrimination. And that, you know, that made me think, because I think that's the monk here, isn't it? St Francis is that service to humanity. And I think that is a big part of the hermit as well that's sometimes not spoken about. So just before Snow White is born, her mother is sewing and pricks herself with a needle. As the blood flows, she wishes for a child with lips as red as blood, skin as white as snow and hair as black as ebony. Snow White soon comes into the world, but her mother dies during the birth. Snow White's stepmother is a beautiful but wicked, vain and jealous queen. When she asks the magic mirror, which symbolises the search for perfect beauty, an aspect of the sign Virgo, which rules this card. <laughs> Who is the fairest in the land? The mirror replies Snow White. The queen is so angry that she then orders a huntsman to kill Snow White and bring back her heart as proof of the deed. The huntsman, who represents humanity, mortality and humility, has compassion for the young girl and lets her go and brings back the heart of a young animal for the stepmother. Snow White at seven years of age is alone in the forest seeking shelter and protection. She is on a symbolic wisdom pilgrimage. She finds a small cottage with seven beds and seven bowls, the number seven signifying a major spiritual transition. When the dwarfs find her after working all day in the diamond mine, she is fast asleep in one of their beds. In the original version of the story, the dwarfs are gnomes and the gnomes represent earthly wisdom, the inner light shining from the depths of our planet. Snow White begins to grow into her higher wisdom by taking care of the gnomes, cleaning their house and making meals for them. The Wicked Queen finds out that Snow White is still alive by asking the Magic Mirror again who is the fairest in the land. Over many years, <coughs> excuse me, the stepmother tries to kill Snow White three more times. The first time disguised as a merchant selling lace. In the second encounter, the stepmother transforms herself into a woman selling combs. Um... And the gnomes rescue her again. And in the third experience, the stepmother changes herself into an old woman selling apples that she has secretly poisoned. Snow White, still lacking in that wise discrimination, takes a bite of the poisoned apple and appears to fall dead. Actually, she falls into a deep coma from which the gnomes cannot revive her. The earthly wisdom has run its course and Snow White is ready for her final initiation. She cannot stay in the cottage, which represents darkness forever, so the gnomes place her in a glass coffin where the light streaming through the forest can illuminate her body, heart and soul. She needs to come into the light. Her inner service, dutiful work for the gnomes, cleaning, nurturing others, being humble, has been completed. The prince comes. He picks her up, takes her to his horse and as he carries her, the piece of poisoned apple is dislodged from her throat. This is a symbolic clearing of the throat chakra and a re-empowerment of Snow White's primal wisdom. United with her animus, who is the prince, 
she has become crowned with the seventh chakra in wholeness and light. Traditionally, this card in the Major Arcana is known as the Hermit and is often portrayed as a wise old man or woman. Through the pilgrimage and odyssey of Snow White, we learn about becoming whole when all aspects of the soul life and personality life are fused and integrated. Living in an isolated or separate state will not bring happiness and contentment. The active world we are called to do in life is only partially physical, emotional and mental. There is also our soul work, our service to humanity, the opportunity and challenge to be a light to the world. When this card appears in your reading, you are ready to receive the buried treasures of your own wisdom that dwell in the deep caverns of your ancestral past. Just as the seven dwarfs assist Snow White by reviving her from the wicked perils of transformation and showering her with gems from the cave mines, you are assisted by your spiritual helpers and guides. This is a card of service and deep reflection. As you open your own heart and soul to the treasures of your own destiny, you will find many new opportunities to illuminate and brighten the world around you. So there we go. Isn't that nice? I think my camera slipped. <laughs> I actually resonate with that story a great deal. My, my whole career was working as a mental health nurse. Um, well, I say that actually my first couple of years of work, I was a children's nanny and then I was a mental health nurse. For a time, I was a homelessness advocate and support worker. Um, so my life, my working life has always been in service to others, which is very Virgo-ish, isn't it? You know, I've also been a mother. I also am a mother to my own son. I was a mother to my ex-partner's children. Um, so I feel like a lot of my life has been in service to other people. And um, and I do feel that at this older stage in life that I'm now starting to um, experience my own light, I suppose, my own um, my own time of, you know, finding my own destiny, I suppose, if you like, of um, not necessarily being so focused on other people and what other people need but being more focused on what I need and through that being able to hopefully help and support and illuminate in ways for other people. I hope you know what I mean. I <laughs> Whenever I talk about things like that it always makes me feel like I'm being a bit, um, I don't even know the word to be honest, I just taking myself too seriously perhaps I don't really know um because I can assure you I really really don't in life but I do feel like my life has been a progression of um needing to be out there like Snow White where she did her dutiful work for the gnomes cleaning nurturing being humble and then that is completed and she moves on to the next stage in her life. And I feel that when I retired a few years ago from my job, that that's kind of what's happened with me, I suppose. So I hope that this might resonate for some of you. I, th I think it's probably likely to, because I think there are many women, many people my age on YouTube that will resonate with the Snow White story there. So, um... Yeah, I hope that you enjoyed that. And like I said, do say hello. I'd love to hear from you. And I hope to catch up and watch everybody else's video soon. So take care and see you all soon.